Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is the Wix Online Meeting 212 coming to you on lucky Friday the 13th in May. We got a lot of things to cover tonight, actually today, this morning. I'm all turned around, forget it. I've been up all the time. Uh, these meetings are recorded for those of you that aren't with us right here, right now. We do have some important stuff to talk about, but not too much of it. And then we're going to turn around and go back and get to work. Um, if you're here, say hi. Jacob's already said hello. Jacob, great to have you with us. Uh, these are the things we're going to talk about today. We'll do triage just so we don't get too far behind. We'll talk about preview zero status. Um, yes, because it didn't release in the last two weeks, but we'll talk about what that what happens from here. And then we'll do usual questions and comments for anybody that wants to bring up things that they're doing right now that we don't otherwise cover. So I know we all want to talk about preview zero. Let's go ahead and get through triage real quick. Bob, you ready? Uh, yes. Yes. And they're plowing through the agenda. He's like, uh, whatever. All right. I happen to know that Bob said he was very busy, so I'm going to expect that there's been nothing done on this first one. Um, and that is correct. And, and given the, the focus on preview zero, we're just going to let it slide for another couple of weeks. Um, as is the same with this one. Um, we've done nominal amounts of effort to go track down the, what the final answer with .NET Frameworks decisions to put updated content behind URLs uh, that will break things. Um, we don't have solid answers for anything, but we haven't really run this down hard because we'll have been trying to get preview zero out the door. So I'd like to just leave this here for another two weeks and come back. The, the sneak peek right now, I think, is that I don't think anything's going to change, um, contrary to my hope um, from uh, I presented last uh, last meeting. So we'll just deal with the fallout as it rolls from here. Um, but we'll talk about that next uh, in two weeks from now. Uh, bring back options to verify payload by authentication signature. This is fallout from the previous issue. Um, Sean, I, are we, we're just putting this in 4.0 and rolling with it? Yeah, we'll have to design it because it sounded like we want to different, expose it differently in the language. Yeah, like do we yeah, even can, expose can... it in the language and only make a remote payload thing or something maybe? I don't know, yeah. Can can we also talk about whether we actually need this? This authentic code did not solve the problem for the what was it, SHA five twelve or SHA two fifty six, whichever they picked, change. But um, as I pointed out, they've updated it since already. Right. Which again is, you know, their screw up. Um, now, granted, at this point, the Authenticode check only would, would solve the problem. However, given that Microsoft has done this, and they apparently feel no shame whatsoever in having further updated the packages, um, it seems likely to me that we cannot rely on Microsoft to, you know, follow Web 101 rules. Let's... Um, Let's put this with the other one. We're not going to design it here. Um, Sorry, I, no, I, I, I don't want to design it. I don't want to do it. I, I, I understand. I, I, we need to do something. Um, right, and I'm suggesting that the answer is not to bring back authentic code support. Um, I'm suggesting the answer is to make it easy for people to host these packages on their own. So they can follow Web 101 rules and not be affected when Microsoft does not. Uh, that's uh, that's fair. Let's talk about that when we're ready to talk about this. And I kind of want to get try to get a little bit more input on what Microsoft's thinking is on this .NET Framework thing um, and the way they're acting right now. So to me, it's kind of like let's get 6438, some more input on 6438 to then drive 6447. But we have to figure out something. Okay, so we're just going to slip this one? Yeah, I just want to slip this one. I, okay. it, it's, it's a bigger conversation. We need to have it, but we don't need to have it today. Um, and we all need to get back to the things that are important for today, I guess is kind of what I'm thinking. Okay. Cool. All right. I really want Sean to be okay with it. He's like, I didn't know if you were in a hurry to, to get to this or not. Um, all right. 
test discovery code coverage fail system argument session when a Wix project is in a workspace. Yeah, uh, Votive is very sensitive to a great many things. Um, so I guess we're going to have to wait and see if someone wants to try to actually see if this fixes it for them. So we'll put it in Votive and put it in 4X and see if someone wants to pick it up. Sure. Work right. All right. Uh, documentation, some broken links. Uh, you can go ahead and give this to me. I am in the web project now. Um, had I realized this was just broken links, I would have fixed it when I was doing other little web stuff when I'm getting the documentation put together. Um, so anyway, let's go ahead and bring that back. Or go ahead and give that to me in the web, and I will fix that in the next day. I'll just be straightforward and fix. Um, next one. Firewall rule not created if different rule exists with same name. I didn't I didn't quite parse this. Did this make sense to you guys? Yeah, the firewall extension. It, the name is treated by the firewall extension as um, a unique oh, identifier. As a unique identifier. Okay. It does not have to be. I see. Um, but you know. That was the design. That was, you know, not a mistake. Right. Uh, given that you can make the name unique, and there's a bit of a mix of, you know, if you open up the firewall applet, you can see some do and some don't. You can make it unique. Um, uh, yeah, I don't have a. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. This isn't a bug. It's it's a feature request to make, you know, I guess to, well, it's being reported as a bug. Um, it's not a bug. You want a different design, you know, it's doable. I don't want to lose the existing functionality. Again, that was intentional. It's, you know, if you reinstall, we should reinstall the the we should reinstall the exception as it exists. Right, picking the actual properties has different issues, different challenges if you the, because you could change those and then and you want that support. Yes, and you definitely want that support. Um, yeah, so I can think you, that should be put in the issue for sure, Bob. So we don't. Can you that. create multiple names, multiple rules with the same name? Yes, it is uh, possible through the UI to do so. Yes. Hmm. How would it know what to uninstall when it comes time to uninstall? We would have to pick something that uniquely identifies the firewall or that, that identifies the firewall. Right now, we picked the name because, as Bob said, you can make them unique. And uh, the, this issue is about, well, we should pick the things that make the firewall specific, like all the various properties. And there's a bunch of them. So um, that's non-trivial, but which is also you know, a valid way of looking at it. But then there's the downsides of if you're during repair, you want to change those values, given the way the one installer works, that becomes very challenging to then delete the old one and create the new one, essentially, to make that happen. Yeah. So it's hard to get both behaviors. And I think what I think Bob's point is probably correct that uh, having to create a unique name is better than the downsides you'll get if you actually were to implement this feature this way. Yeah. Unless we start creating a whole separate store, tracking all the things we've installed, and yada yada, which is you know an experimentation that I thought about, where you're like, yeah, we'll just track all the resources ourselves in some other database somewhere, but that's not at all the way to win a star works. That would create a large amount of work, and you've entered into a completely different universe at that point. So um, I think Bob's comment is probably the best one. And we can, and we can add an ID to make it unique. I avoided that because it wasn't necessary. Yeah, but you can't store that ID with the firewall, right? There's nowhere to put that ID on the firewall. Like if you could no, actually tag in the, the database, and that's the, you know, we we have the database when we're installing and uninstalling. So. Yeah, but that won't help us locate the thing in the in the the real world. Uh, yeah, which is the root problem. 
if every single resource on Windows had the ability to tag it with a little piece of metadata, our life would be much easier. Um, kind of. Um, the, the, the firewall API today, the firewall API that the firewall custom action uses um, does not does not, firewalls don't have this tag, right? Nope. So they rely on the name. Yep. Um, yep. So, yep. Certificates have. We use the friendly name to yeah. scroll away data on certificates, on registry keys. Well, we let the Windows installer deal with it. And if you change the path in the middle of that, weird things can happen. So, I mean, it's just, yeah. This is a challenge that we get to deal with on. Installing stuff via the Windows installer with reference counting, tracking, repair, uninstall, patching, so on and so forth, all the scenarios. So, all right, I think your comment is a good one that we probably should add to this issue, and I don't think we're gonna take it, right? Because I think this is the, of all the evils of having to, essentially of having to steal something from the firewall to make it unique, the name is probably the best option given everything that we want. I'll write it up. Great. Fantastic. And we're at the end of that. All right. Let's go back and talk about Preview Zero. Had a dream that Preview Zero was going to come out um, two weeks ago. <laughs> no, not two weeks ago. Um, on May 4th, that would have been eh, less than two weeks ago, but mostly. A week ago in a couple days. Um, it's been um, a challenge. There's been lots of little challenges, um, several of which were, um, uh, I lost the word. Uh, the future had been seen um, by uh, a friend of mine here and former uh, contributor with Toolset, uh, Peter Marc, who laid out a number of the challenges that we were going to have um, or that with the micro repos and moving back and everything like that. So anyway, I chatted with him and uh, this last week and was like, all right, the new path I'm on is essentially very similar to the path that you guys have been on. Um, for reference, Peter used to work on the Wix tool set um, many moons ago. Um, and he now, he then owned the .NET uh, core as it became the .NET core and all that open source stuff. And then he switched, now he owns the Azure SDKs, which means he's dealt with this SDK publishing problem um, which is the root of the challenges that I've had this last week of how do you publish an API out of your system and then how do you consume that API yourself. Uh, he had been through a lot of those challenges and so um, he's kind of validated where I've landed. I'm not gonna talk about where we've landed. That will be another uh, thing for another meeting after I update the WIP, which still needs to be updated um, with the new world. But the net result is things seem to be working. Uh, we are in a, a mono repo again that's layered um, as opposed to segmented, for those of you that were following along with the keywords, the buzzwords of the last couple weeks. Um, I will talk about all this in the future, none of which you care about. What's in preview zero? Uh, again, reminder, Wix.exe distributed as a .NET tool. So we will be publishing the Wix NuGet package that you'll be able to get .NET tool install Wix, and it will give you Wix.exe. That can build MSIs, merge modules, and bundles. The extensions for uh, Bootstrap applications, uh, NetFX, UI, and Util will also be published as individual NuGet packages, and you will be able to do the extension, um, bring those extensions and reference them through Wix.exe. The conversion in Wix.exe to convert your V3 code to V4 source code uh, should be working, and so you'll be able to take your code, your V3 code, and convert it to V4 code, and then try to compile it and see how that all turns out. That's what we're hoping a lot of people try to do. Um, and you will not then turn around and check that code back in. <laughs> it will be a, hey, look, I have experimented with V4 and proven, uh, provided some validation of what the level of quality that Preview Zero is for the compiler and uh, the core tool set of making MSIs, merge modules, and bundles. After that, things that we've basically called Preview 1 um, should be MS Build and MS uh, and Patches. Uh, MS build being the big thing that then opens up all the rest of the scenarios that m most people will want. 
So uh, we recognize that there's going to be a lot of people waiting for us to do that before they can really um, start looking at Wix 4, but that will come next. And then also patches. There's patches kind of work in Wix.exe. There's a number of scenarios that don't work well, so we just don't want those bugs yet, and that's why they're not in Preview 0, but we will finish off those things that we know don't work in Preview 1 and then have patching out there. So the net result is, I think right now, on track for Monday. Actually, I hope the build is ready tomorrow. Um, if things go well, um, I'll bring up the set of bugs that we are uh, that we have left. the The big thing that I'm doing right now is the documentation, trying to get all of the XSDs and things like that built in a process repeatedly, such that we can go through and um, basically fix any doc issues that people report that we have that we just want to spend some time on writing the docs. Now that V4 will be out there, there will be more value in, um, well, not more value, there will be value in improving the docs so people that people are using. And so make that process very easy to edit the doc, save it, publish it, and then have it show up on the website. So I'm working on that process now to make that all work. So that means that we have these things. I was just talking about the Wix 4 should have documentation. That's what I'm working on right now. I'll skip to the bottom, this NuGet package. But that gets resolved. That means that Preview 0 is available up on NuGet.org. So that gets resolved at the very end. Um, after that, uh, it we uh, pop the champagne, as, as we metaphorically say. In between, uh, there's an issue that Sean reminded me that we talked about in a previous um, thing that I need to split this. We're not going to do this whole feature, but we're going to do parts of this feature. So I need to get this uh, 5125 and finish the changes that are related to that that are in the language. But that I actually it. did get the rest of it done. Oh, you did it. So you're just waiting then on the language part. All right, cool. So then we'll get the language part done, and then we can actually close this whole issue, um, which will be great. And this is a relatively, well, I'm not going to say small, but it's a very straightforward change in the um, core tool set, so I'm not particularly worried about having that be successful. I am much more worried about finishing the documentation pipeline that Bob did great work getting huge chunks of it, and I just need to finish integrating it into everything. <sighs> so that's the thing that's on the docket, is trying to get V4 uh, documentation published. It'll show up on wixtoolset.org. It's not going to be live. There's not going to be a lot of links pointing to it. Um, and I'll come to that in a minute, Jacob. Um, so it, the, if you go looking for the V3 manual, if you then flip to the V4 of the same URL, you'll know that, hey, Rob got that working if that URL starts resolving. For example, the file element v4 shows up, and then I'll wire it into the rest of the system and get the rest of the web pages organized such that the v4 content is accessible, and just rotate through that process so that when there's anything that we need to do, like um, fixing the XSD because it needs lots of fixing, um, we'll be able to do those changes. They'll immediately show up on the web, and that will be flowing. So there's those two things: 5125 versus what's the difference in 5125 versus a layout other than it's going to be in the cache versus a layout. I don't I mean, quite... we kind of, we had like an hour and a half discussion about how we wanted to do it, so. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're going to want to go back to, to that. Um, I mean, I guess the short answer is that during install, burn is now going to cache the package more often than it used to. So the only scenario that changes is when the overall action is install. Not a command line interface option. Yeah, it's just cleaning up the language. OK, all right, Jacob's on board with whatever the old conversation was. All right, cool. So um, this list is very short. Um, interestingly, not all the bugs are assigned to me, but I am the one that is doing the final parts on all of them. <laughs> uh, but that's fine. Uh, these will get taken care of, and the goal is that on Monday, uh, sometime Monday, uh, that will be done. 
Bob brought up the idea. Did you bring it up on the stream, Bob, or did you send it privately? I don't know. But the idea of um, live streaming the release process. Um, oh, I, yeah, I saw that. Um, uh, the Python release manager did right. that for their most recent release. Yeah, so I'm I'm the more I've thought about it, the more I'm I'm thinking I might try to do it. The biggest concern I have is making sure that I don't publish any secrets while I'm doing it. <laughs> I don't stream out any secret keys or anything while doing so. And since this is my first process, I'm nervous about that, but I should be able to do enough research before Monday uh practice to make sure that I don't put the keys somewhere on screen. Um so I'll probably do that because it's basically just bringing up this window, jumping on this uh, Twitch stream and saying, hey, here we go. This is what we're doing. And if people want, I will send out uh, a meeting invite for when I think that's going to happen. It'll come over the weekend um, as I become more confident that, yes, <laughs> everything is uh, good to go, ready to be done and up and away. So Monday, May 17th. I'm hoping uh, in the morning our time. So honestly, something like around now. I was thinking around this time, uh, which is 10 a.m. Uh, Pacific time, that to kind of get the build done, published, pushed out. The build may already be done. It may just be the final process of putting up on NuGet, and then you know doing the happy dance. So and waiting and seeing if people pick it up and if we get feedback. Um, on the flip side, then it also means that we need we get to immediately jump over to preview one and start finishing that set the that set of issues of which there are plenty of things left to do. But we will probably need to do a triage sweep through what goes in preview one and so on and so forth. Um, since there's a lot of little things that were tossed in from the three days of ah well it's a breaking change we'll maybe we'll do it in four we have to decide whether we're actually going to do it in four preview one so. Monday, May 17th, feels like the day. Nothing special about that day from a American holiday kind of thing. We're just going to pull the trigger and push it all up there. Cool? Cool? Cool. Anything else people want to talk about? Stuff going on, expectations, hopes, dreams. Is there any plans to do more previous year builds, or is that just going to be what it is, and if someone runs into a bug, they'll just have to wait for preview one. Um, my, I, I've been thinking about this, and right now the the, <laughs> I, I don't think we're gonna do multiple preview zero build, builds. What we may end up deciding to do is that we're gonna do a preview one build, which is not the MS build and patchwork. Right, so it'll be a, oh, here's preview one that fixes a bunch of things that were broken in preview zero that we decided that fixing these uh, immediately or quickly has value uh, because there's enough people trying out preview zero. I really don't know how many people are going to try out preview zero. I don't know how much feedback we're going to get. I don't know how many bugs we're going to get and how many of those bugs are going to be blocking. It, it could run the whole gambit of immediate showstoppers to um, hardly anybody but us touches it. Uh, and I just don't know what we're going to get. So um, I am prepared to redefine, I think, preview one into here's the set of fixes for um, preview zero that, you know, all of you that have been awesome and jumped on preview uh, onto preview zero, here's the fixes that will unblock you. And then preview two gets all the MS build stuff. It's kind of the thinking. Because, I don't know, trying to do a preview zero dot one it's kind of weird, <laughs> or 0.5, it's kind of weird, and so on and so forth. So I'm inclined to just kind of redefine uh, preview one as the preview zero dot dot, or plus one kind of thing. Well, aren't the preview zero builds tagged with the build number? No. Not, not, my plan is not for the one that goes public to be tagged with the build number. Okay. I guess I was, I'm, it would be nice if we could go back to just doing a build regularly and just pushing it up with whatever is there. To NuGet? Yeah. So everybody just gets the latest build every time? We could do that, but 
every build. We've never done that in Wix. I mean, not it doesn't have to be every build, but just regularly, like every week, week every build. two weeks, every three weeks, just do a new build and push it. Uh, we could do that. We could just be like, all right, here's the weekly build of Wix. It's going to rev for a lot of people with potentially not a lot of change in it um, any given week. Why would it rev, though? I mean, it's it's a preview build, so you're not going to... Oh, you're saying preview builds every, every week? Or are you talking about the final Wix 4 build? I was talking about preview. Oh, just preview builds. I see. Um, so just start pushing preview builds to nougat.org. OK. I guess I was thinking if we did that, we would do that to a quieter feed than nougat.org. Yeah, basically, the two of you have have laid out the opposite ends of the opposite ends of the spectrum. Yeah. Um, you, you want you want it to be almost impossible to do extra builds and Sean wants to shove, fill the feed with random builds. Yeah, I guess I, I mean, somewhere I, I got the feed. feed. Yeah, I guess I got some of the feedback from Nougat that they're like, don't push your weekly builds here. Nougat.org, that is. Um, I but mean, that's, it doesn't that's have to be Nougat, just oh. a feed where people oh, can get a feed. the latest. Yeah, okay, a feed. Yeah, I haven't got Yes. Yeah, we can we can work towards that. Yes. I haven't got to that point of trying to have a feed of all of of just a build available. Yes. I getting to that point is probably a good thing. I haven't thought about that problem yet. And nothing that's been done has precluded such a feed from being from being brought back or from But we would have to put the build number in. It would have the build number. Yes, that okay. would have the build number in it. Absolutely. But it, it would Maybe be like Maybe Nougat gets preview zero with no build number and a private feed or a private, less public feed gets one with the build number? Correct. That's That would be the way that I would generally work. That seems reasonable. Yeah. Yeah, just... That would be, the, to... that would be straightforward to implement with what we have now, not having that final part of actually having a feed. <laughs> like just knowing that there's right. no feed right now. But the rest That's... of the process is in place to make that happen. I'd have to brush up on my Simber. I think the more information you give, the higher precedence. No, the less information you give, the higher the precedence. It's on the on the um, pre-release tag part, the less information you have, the higher the precedence, also counting in alphabetical sorting. Um, okay. So if we publish preview zero with no build number, it would win over preview zero with a build number? Unless you said you wanted a preview zero with a build number. Uh, no, we're saying the same thing. I'm saying a preview zero without a build number on NuGet would take pre precedence over a preview zero with a build number. Ah, preview zero without a build number on NuGet would win over a preview zero with a build number on GitHub packages or whatever. Is that correct? <sighs> If you don't specify the build number part, yes. If you say, I want preview zero dash build something, then mm -hmm. I don't think preview zero will win. Okay. Right, but if you said, just give me preview zero, sure, and sure. you had a newer build number than technically what preview zero was, it'd be like, no, 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 preview zero is better than any suffix you put on the end of it. Yep, yep. And given that, Right now, Wix.exe is a .NET tool. Then, you know, you have to put this. You know, you have to be. I, I don't know how explicit. I haven't tried putting wildcards in when installing a tool. Um, I've always specified the exact number I wanted. Um, and then later on with the MS Build SDKs, I don't think they support wildcards in the global.json, and they don't support wildcards in the um, in the yeah, SDK attribute. They might support wildcards in the SDK element. I haven't tried that. So hmm. 
in in that case, again, if you put the number you want, you'll get the right thing in that case too. So in well, general, I think it's to be clear, I, I don't have a problem with needing to be specific when we're talking about preview builds. Yes, right. That, I, I'm, that's, that's my thinking that, as well. Yeah, it's hello. Don't you don't it's preview? You don't want random <laughs> random builds. I mean, yeah. Who knows what's going to change between those two builds? Right, exactly. Could radically mm-hmm. change, and it does radically change. We break all kinds of things. Uh, hopefully, less after preview zero. That's kind of the intent. Um, but before, lots of things change. So, yeah. Um, yes. So, bringing a thing to have access to the preview builds, or to have any random build easily, is definitely something we can look at adding um, in the not distant future, and it should not be terribly challenging to do so. Jacob said, persistent variable task, discussion with devs, no consensus. Right. Um, Jacob, I, yeah, I've decided that I was just tossing random ideas just or random things to say, hey, if you wanted to consider this, this is this, and then decided that I probably was not helping. So I stopped doing that. Um, Rob, Rob is big on poking bees nests as well. No, no, no. I, I literally was just trying to say, and then this is what the Windows installer does in this option, just for example. And then people are like, we don't like that option. I'm like, fine, don't use that one. I did not mean for anybody to say, and that has some weight. I'm like, no, no, no. It was just an option. <laughs> not even sure it was a good option because I have not thought deeply about this. Um, I thought Sean made a number of very good points. And then I think Jacob brought up uh, something that sounded like consensus at the end, and then that's where I left the thread because I was trying to make sure that I got all this math right, this release math right, to make sure that we could release preview zero and have that go correctly and still be able to release future builds like Sean wants and have everything not have the world melt down. So I'm now going to exit this conversation, and you guys can talk about what you want to do with this uh, particular part of it. And I, and I have nothing else, so as soon as you guys decide on what, how far you want this conversation to go, um, we're done with this meeting. Sean. Yeah, I wasn't able to read it. I'm still processing his comment. For my persistent variables task, we may have some good discussion on Wix devs, but no apparent consensus. I propose that we keep the pipe. Well, it's in the. I don't know why I'm reading this. I'm I'm used to the days when we don't have comments visible on the screen, but it's visible for anybody that wants to see it. Um, break up the storage in the registry versus just storing the file locally. Yeah, that was an interesting option I hadn't thought of myself. So I guess the thing about querying the type is is that we discuss that in a different bug. So when I created the literal versus, well, when I created the formatted new variable type, that was something that came up where I was wondering whether the BA should be able to ask, is this variable formatted or literal? And the consensus that we got there was the BA should know what it is. And there should be no reason for it to ask the engine what the type is for any variable. So that's why I'm not sure why we would do this for this persisted variables. What makes that special to where they need to know the type instead of being like the existing API where they just tell what type they want it to be in? A variable's type could change over time. I mean, I, I get that the engine needs to know what the type is, but I don't know why anyone else needs to know the type when a BA can't ask what the, a type of a variable is in the first place.
BAs always ask for a variable as a specific type, and coercion happens if it's necessary. Is that correct? Right. Okay. So store everything as a string. No, sorry. <laughs> I mean, I thought that's where we landed. Store everything as a string, and then were you keeping? Were you suggesting keeping the resume file? Oh, sorry, Jacob. If he's not storing the blob, then he needs to store the type, right? Um, one question: Don't we still need to store the blob because some things aren't persisted to the registry? The blob only has the variables. There's nothing else in there. type is stored in the manifest then? No, I mean, the type is stored in the blob. Oh. But the only thing the blob contains is the deserialized variables. Right. Right, OK, that's what I thought. The blob has a name type invariant value, OK. So it has every, the blob has everything it needs for that for that particular bundle to work. And then sharing with under bundle, other bundles, which is what this persisted stuff is most useful for, could just fall back to, it's a string and you can deal with it. So right. I guess I you lost, can... yeah, you're right. So I guess I'm, I'm not understanding why Jacob isn't wanting to store the blob. I never saw someone complain about that. Right. Storing the blob is just nothing changes. Well, it has to because we're not persisting everything to the registry. It probably comes from maybe a comment I made a while ago about the um, if you store everything in the registry, it's one less thing to clean up. Um, or you have to worry about um, being left behind because the uninstall key gets deleted automatically if the thing the uninstall key points at is missing. Or the user's prompted, hey, do you want to delete all this? But not the file in the package cache. Yes, if we store the blob, then we no longer have a single source of truth. Yes, that's absolutely true. But but the well, we do. The blob is the truth, and the thing that's in the registry is a published uh, a, a projection of that truth for other people to be able to access. Right? Yeah. I mean, I'm I'm fine with not having a single source well i mean the blob is a single source of truth yeah and i'm fine with if someone changes the registry variable then or registry value then it's not reflected in the blob but they shouldn't be doing that yeah so yeah don't i think do, that's okay yeah don't do that none of those uninstall keys are editable like there's no precedent that you should be editing those things even you know historically Yeah, that's, yeah, Jacob, yeah. You, I think you guys crossed on the delay of the stream. Yep. Yeah, it's it's just a projection. It's a, here, I'm sharing these with the world, and um, Burn should do its best to make sure that the projection represents what it has, but not be particularly worried about the outside world messing up that projection, namely the user going and manually editing it through regedit. Right? Right. Yeah, that makes sense. So I guess I, on Wix devs, I pointed out that this could be a problem, but then I said, I don't really care. <laughs> I think we should ignore it. I was still trying to target not having the blob, so that's what I was, ah, I see. Right. No, we have to have the blob because not all variables are persisted or what was the word we picked not persisted um right well i mean theoretically we could serialize 
bit into the registry. We could move um, the blob into the registry. We could have, you know, had a, you know, we talked about persisting it with the registry type mapping to a variable type. Yeah. Or um, I think Ron came up with the idea that you have two values for each variable. One has the value and one has the type. Yeah. I just thought the blob was the easiest thing to implement. Yeah. And right. we don't care about the projection getting someone messing with the projection. Like, I don't think that's something we should worry about. Right. All right. I'm with you. And I think Jacob is too, based on his thing. That works. OK, cool. Um, yes, all right. I think that's that, then. Do we want to keep the blob as a file or as a reg entry? Sean, do you have a preference? Not really. I mean, I guess your point was valid that if it's not a file, then it's easier to clean up. Yeah, it'd be one less file in the, you know, it'd be one less magical file in the package cache. Um, I don't know, that's been a problem, but I, I don't, I'm okay with a blob. Unless it gets too big, unless there's some registry problem of having blobs that are too big, that'd be the only concern. I don't know if there is such a problem on registry keys. I would vote registry. It's not problematic. If it it's does not solve a problem. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. It solves a problem of the left leftover RSM file. Right. And they already have a blob. Uh, what is it? What's it called? It's not called blob. Rich binary. Binary. Thank you. Um, that's like, yeah, here. <laughs> don't look at this. <laughs> yeah, reg binary. There we go. So I don't know. I'm, I'm fine with that. That's That's... I don't know, Sean is then yay. All right. Yeah. yeah. All right. I I think I think that's it, Jacob. Okay. And on that, I'll give Jacob a couple more seconds and try to fill space here. Um Jacob, and you should be looking at Wix four repo now. Um, just FYI. Um not quite ready to bring it in, but we'll be soon and if you target Wix4 now, whatever branch, you know, the develop branch or whatever we end up targeting to um, will be the same as where you're at now, really close. Um, all right, so, so that brings up two questions. Okay. One is the Wix4 repo ready to be targeted, other than, you know, obviously we're not going to take pull requests until preview zero is shipped. Yes. Is that your answer? Yes. 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 The answer oh. is yes, you should start targeting the Wix4 repo if you have changes, like Jacob, or I'm sure Sean has already started on sets of things. Um, you should be targeting Wix4 right now. I've not thought this all the way through, so this is not set in stone, but right now my expectation is we will go back to a, uh, a master branch and a develop branch, and the develop branches will do work, and the master as well releases will come out of. So uh, you should expect to be targeting develop, but because those two branches are identical or will be identical when they come out right now, um, you can target either one and then it'll be the you know, the same merge conflicts if anybody else, um, whatever branch ends up being the default branch for targeting development against. So yes, it's ready. That answered my second question. Hmm. Um, so I will come up with another second question, <laughs> uh, which is our the micro repos now essentially all archivable, deprecated. Yes. I just need to pull the trigger on that. Okay. Um, and I was hesitant to do that because I didn't know how permanent an archival was. And so I didn't experiment with the old Wix4 repo and it's not permanent at all. So it is purely just a toggle. Um, so they could go through and be marked archived now. Um, there's just a, I have a couple changes out to those repos that I have to decide whether I want to bother pushing them into them or not. So you know, here's where we ended up. Um, I haven't decided which way to go there. Um, Is the doc repo a micro repo? 
Um, <laughs> I'm in the middle of that right now. <laughs> I'm in the middle of that right now and trying to figure out exactly where do I want the 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 relationship between the the documentation that goes has two relationships. One, it would be nice if it was synced with the changes to the code for when that happens. Two, it needs it is published as part of the or uh, the XSDs, for example, are used as source to be published as part of the website. And so I am trying I have not decided <laughs> where to put the XSDs on those two places. And right now they're in the middle in the doc repo, which may end up being a good or a bad thing. I'm still just kind of working my way through, all right, let me get these XSDs built as part of the website and integrated and then feel where they best flow into all these problems, knowing that the experience that I had in Wix 3 was not great and I did not like it at all. So I don't want to repeat that one, which was we would build the code publish a bunch of HTML and then send it over to the website and pull it and edit it and integrate it over there. That experience was not great. So I have to decide what the new one will be knowing that that one was not great um, and hoping that one of these other options to choose from is better. Cool, quiet, everybody seems like that. Cloning Wix 4, then format patch my existing change support from Wix to Wix 4 repo. Yep, Jacob, yep, target, target 4. And target Wix 4. All the history is there. Yep. So if you add the micro repo as a remote, you should be able to just cherry pick yeah. your changes. And they work pretty well. I did that several times trying to keep everything nice and clean so that it would be easy to move across these without losing any history, which is also why I don't want to talk about it now, but I'm going to stick it here because Sean usually has allergic reactions when I suggest this, but I'm actually debating whether we can delete the um, micro repos since I brought all the history. I know it doesn't, the pull request is a challenge, but we'll talk about that on a future date. We don't have to do that right now. So, all right, let's go back. We've been here for almost an hour. Uh, it's all good. Wix 4, zero pre Wix 4 Preview 0 is clearly the focus. Monday's the goal. Um, I'm pretty confident in Monday. Let's go finish and be done and uh, then know that much of the process is in place so that Preview 1 doesn't have nearly the amount of excitement in just pushing the bits out there. Excitement. I like that. I'm trying to be positive. It's been a very challenging two weeks. Um, all right. Until then, all of you take it easy. We will be back in two weeks, but we're going to release this thing before that. There will be discussions going around. But the 27th, uh, we'll be back. We'll do this time slot. We'll talk about where we're at, how things are going, um, things like that. But until then, all of you take it easy. Uh, preview zero is right around the corner. Bye. Bye. Bye.